All right. Where we last left off. Yes. Uh, you guys have decided to, to split into two different groups. One decided to go searching for common items to just purchase for your further travels, as well as a new set of clothing for the party. Cloaks and I believe some sort of like ski mask looking thing. What? Ninja plague masks. <laughs> yes. Um, mm. The other half of the party decided to try to venture forth and find uh, the hideout of Gobber, the goblin. Um... A known black market magic item dealer. Uh, while perusing through the sewer system where his last known location was, uh, you happen to stumble across a couple of the low leveled inquisitors uh, poking around and searching for this hideout as well. Um, you had a quick encounter with them, uh, murdering them. Uh, Sigma had happened to fire it off an Aldric blast, causing the. <laughs> the methane levels to ignite, causing a slight scorch on everybody. I was being thorough. Um, one of the Inquisitors had escaped. Uh, the other party had proceeded to enter into the sewer system, uh, bringing along Spud, uh, and were able to distinguish that there was a man down here. Uh, they found out that he was an Inquisitor. Uh, the man demanded a safe passage as he was trying to get through. Um, I believe it was Birchwood who tried to strike him and miss. Uh, the man proceeded by pulling something from underneath his cloak, muttering some words in Inferno, and then proceeded to try to kill himself. Um, Wait, he tried to kill himself? I totally missed that. Yep, yep. He uh, was attempting to strike himself and finish himself off. But I'm pretty sure, um, no, I'm, I'm pretty sure none of you actually finished him off. I think he finally was able to do it himself. Hmm. I thought he died from, uh, Toll of the Dead. Oh, that is true. Yes, he did go out from Toll of the Dead. Get the wisdom save of seven. Excuse me. Um, yep. Yeah. All right. So, we'll pick up with Birchwood's group. Um, this man is dead. He fell over, eyes bleeding, ears bleeding, dead. Uh, you already happen to know he was a human by just seeing his appearance and the ability of him not being able to see that well down here. Um, Hennessy, your axe is still in the ceiling of the sewer system. Uh, you guys do see the faint glow of a torch to your left side as this uh, immediate tunnel comes to a T. Uh, you also do hear some banter and coming from around that corner. Um, I believe your perceptions are above a 12, correct? Like naturals. Apparently I haven't plugged those in. 14? Yep. Yeah. So I would, I would definitely say Birch, but you would know that at least one of them is Striker and one of them is Sigmad. All right, I'm gonna start uh, changing into this guy's clothes. Um. Okay. Give me a oh, not a survival. Give me a percentile. I'm assuming high was in your favor. Ah uh, yes. So he he's about a foot lower than you. <sighs> So everything is too tight. Um, with that being said, though, his cloak should... It, it's just a cloak. Um, nothing fancy about it. Okay. I'm just going to toss over his cloak. and You said he, uh, he had a mask, right? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to throw that on real quick. Okay. I'm going to pull my axe from the wall or ceiling, yep, wherever easy. it ended up. Yep, easy enough for you to take care of. Hey, uh, Hennessy, you wanna you wanna bring this guy with us, or just kind of bury him in the soup down here? What purpose would he serve if we did take him with us? I mean, it's not to serve a purpose, but more to not leave anything behind. I feel like we might get in a little more trouble if we're seen taking a body out of the sewer. 
than one that just happened to commit a sad act on his own in the sewer after a tragic accident. I mean, it sounds good to me. I'm just going to push him into the center of the uh, the waterway there. Okay. So, like, into the sewage itself. Yes. All right, it makes a plop sound like a bloop. <laughs> um, roll a perception check. Both of us or one of us? Um, we'll go with one of you. Ten. All right. Um, plop it in. You see some like rat, uh, sewer rats come scurrying out of the uh, immediate water. Um, that's about it. Uh, start making our way towards the party. All right. Um, coming around the corner. Um, the other party. You guys had spent like an hour down here, trying to find your way. Um. After fighting off these guys, you decided to take a couple seconds to take a breather. And uh, Birchwood and Hennessy, as well as Spud, come around the corner. Howdy. How'd you guys get down here? Can a horse even see down here? We followed your trail of destruction. Oh, I guess that works. Looks like you guys, uh, you missed one. Yeah, but uh, we learned something fancy. Apparently there's sewer trash down here. Fucking treasure of some sort. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, don't worry, though. That one that got away, he didn't get away. Yeah, I figured. You, uh, nice. You're wearing his clothes, so... Excellent. Let the rat feast on his soul. Uh, so, your friend down here, where where is he? Uh, to be determined. I found some, um, what is it called? Uh, these can't that pointed me in their direction, right, Brett? Uh, yes, you did. Um, you're actually pretty close to it. Um, All right. This is kind of where you guys had stopped and you heard the other people talking. All right. So do I just continue on the path I was navigating with my, um, these can't? Um, yeah, pretty much how the thieves can't is written out. It's, um, speaking of a hidden door within this area. Alright, I'm gonna tell a party that we're looking for a hidden door. Uh, do you want us to roll? Uh, it's up to you guys what you want to do. Well, can I roll an investigation to start touching everything? Yes. I'll give her an assist. <laughs> Nowhere near it. Luckily, Hennessy was giving you an assist, so... Oh, Hennessy, hell yeah. Okay, um, looking around, feeling, checking grooves and stuff like that, um, you find one brick that does seem to give away a little bit. It seems like it can be pulled out. Uh, I'm gonna use my super cool manly manicured nails and pull that right out. Alright, give me a deck save. Shit. Alright. A night of mediocre rolls, guaranteed. Alright, so as you pull it out, mm -hmm. you feel a slight tug, like it builds a little tension, you pull it all the way out, and you hear like a string snap, or like a very thin metal cable, and then you hear, and you get struck in the shoulder by like, or by um, some sort of dart. You take four points of piercing damage, give me a constitution save. I told you it was going to kill me. That's intelligence, ignore it. All right, you can feel some sort of poison start spreading into your body, but your body is able to start pushing it out, and you feel that it uh, disperses throughout your body and not affect you. Jack's um, going to look over and be like, yeah, you got to be careful for those. All right, your turn then, smartass. Um, Dax, you do see, um, and Thieves can't, like, if you're looking over there on the back side of the brick where she had pulled it out, it just has, like, a lull just carved a in it. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to roll an investigation to see if I can find it. Damn it. Um, since you actually know of what you're looking for, I'm going to give you advantage on it. Okay, I'll just roll another investigation. All right. So, 
knowing where that trap was and knowing that you're in the general area, you kind of are able to narrow it down. And again, you find another brick location. This time, as you try to, or when you find it, it pushes in, not pull out. All right. Um, you push it in. The wall panel that's in front of you seems to retract inwards and then raise up. Uh, we didn't, uh, reveal in this about five foot wide hallway with, uh, light glowing green brazers on the wall leading through this tunnel. Seems to go about 30 feet until it opens up into a wider space that's not well lit. Already? After I you. guess we're going in then. Mm. Who's going first? You! <laughs> not me. I can't take any more hits. Um, with that being I said, yeah, why don't you guys put yourself up into a, a marching order? I'm done being line leader. I will be in the front. I sounded really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll go after him. You're gonna try to fit Spud through? <laughs> no. I'm... Well, I mean, can Hennessy fit? Hennessy is considered a medium, not a large. I'm less thick than your horse. Spud is not large because it's heightened. <laughs> He's just chunky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all saw the picture of Spud. Yes. If does you the opening have... not look like uh, he'll fit? It does not look like he'll fit. All right, well, I'll see you guys in a bit. Oh. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll try not to die. Yes, yeah, same, need to same here. here. Oh, I'll... Be safe. Um, if just anything clarify, happens to you out here, just scream. <laughs> um, Birchwood, you are currently still not wearing your armor, right? Correct. Okay. So, if you guys are all waiting out there, uh, everybody else is going in? Yep. Okay. Uh, Striker. Yes. Walk it in. Um, moving forward, as you lead this party in, uh, as you get about 20, 25 feet, about 5, 10 feet away from this bigger opening, you can start seeing more torches lighting on the walls on this interior. It's about probably 20 feet wide by another 30 feet deep. Mm. Um, is there anything you'd like to do? It doesn't seem like there's anything in there. Oh, is it opened up into a room? Is that what you're saying? Yes. Hmm. Can I see all sides of it? Like, see all the walls and everything? Yep. Dax, are you sure you have brought us to the right place? Maybe. Hmm, can I inspect the room closer? Um, yeah, what kind of a check would you like to do? Let's see, do I want perception or investigation? Okay. Maybe go with perception? Yeah. yeah. Whatever, what do you want to do? There's two different kind of informations that you can do here. Uh, you could even possibly do an Arcana check if you want. Oh, I have a negative modifier in Arcana. Could I possibly get an uh, advantage on... Yeah, I'll uh, help you out. I'm gonna do... I'm gonna do an investigation. Okay. So who's who's doing the investigating then? Uh... Yeah, I'm helping him out with it. Okay. So He's you're looking both... around for secret doors. Yes. Yep. Looking around for secret doors. Have you entered in, is my next question. Are you still standing within, like, the 5, 10 foot threshold before entering? I'd say we're probably just inside the entrance. Okay. Yeah. So look at, looking around before you enter in, um, you do find another brick. Um, do you push it in? I say you go ahead. I would rather not die. Consensus from the group. Shall we push the button? Uh, I've not had good luck with the uh, switches and levers, so... I will try my luck. luck. <laughs> I enthusiastically slam my hand upon the brick. Alright. Uh, you slam it on, and the door behind you closes. Uh, Birchwood is now cut off from the party. Um, 
as you enter into this large room, though, um, as you have, as you like, just enter in, as soon as you step through the main threshold, though, um, you see instantly pop in front of you um, a large table, multiple shelves. Uh, you see a few gentlemen sitting at a table drinking some sort of liquor. Mm. Um, there's about seven people in here with one ogreish type creature standing at the doorway, kind of looking at you as you enter in. Uh, you do see a goblin at the far end at this large table with various items on it, kind of just sitting there picking at his teeth. Is this the one we're looking for? Yeah, that's Gobber. I'm going to take the lead through this room and head on over to Gobber. Okay. The mouse um. will lead us. <laughs> uh, Birchwood, you had something? Yeah, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and clear up any accidents that are still remaining in this tunnel. Okay, how are you doing that? There's two more. One's actually already like partially in the water. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to roll them into the water, and then I'm going to get out of here with Spud and wait at the entrance. Okay, um, when you push the bodies in, give me another perception check. Uh, yeah, when you push them in, the last body, it makes another large plop. So his body kind of bobbed there for a second, and then it is pulled under. You see a scaly tail flicker as his body's being brought under. Yes, but we're going to stick to this wall and uh, get our way out of here. All right. Easy enough to do. You don't encounter anything as you try to exit. Um, you're able to get out. Um, at the entrance where you came in, it still was unlocked, if I remember correctly. You're okay. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to change into normal clothes and clean spud until they come out. All right, so you're taking off the cloak and mask. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, Dax, as you enter in, pushing your way through. Are you asking, am I pushing my way through? Yeah, yeah, you're just kind of, like, popping in. Like, pushing your way past Stryker. Uh, I'm just going to, like, slip by him. I'm not going to shove. Okay. Um, as you enter in, the ogreish kind of looking creature um, looks down at you and goes... Docs, nice to see you. Do I roll the remember to see if I remember this guy's name? You you don't really remember him. You just you know you kind of seen him down here before. Um, he's kind of the bodyguard of this area. All right. Um, you, you you have seen him rip a man in half once, but uh, you know he wasn't really supposed to be here. All right. Uh, I'm gonna nod to the party behind me and be like, good to see you again. Do you mind if my friends here come along with me? They were here to see Gobber. Nope. But you know the policy. They start shit, I kill them. I know the policy. Right. I'm gonna enter it and, like, beckon for my friends to come along. Okay. I like, I like him. him. <laughs> yeah, I follow along, just kind of looking to make sure people don't want to try to murder us. Striker, this is not the place that you should be trying to make friends. Okay. <laughs> okay. Ritz, you do see quite a few people out of like the eight here. You've got probably six of them just like up eyeballing you guys up and down. Like, what do they have? Why are they here? Kind of deal. Mm hmm. Okay. Do I recognize any of them as people that might interest the party? Maybe. Um, if anything, it would be like more of like you see a fence, like somebody you've sold some goods to from one of the uh, noblemen that you've robbed, that kind of thing. Um, okay. Some of them are also not really known bandits, for, or not bandits, but uh, thieves from the area, but they are associated with this area. Alright, I'm gonna head on over to Gobber. Alright, he's sitting there. Um, he has these, like, wired spectacles. Uh, one of his pointed ears seems to have been bitten off by something. Uh, he's very dingy and dirty. 
Um, you can kind of tell that it spends a lot of his time down here. Mm. Um, as you approach. Is that you, Dax? Yeah, it's me. Good to see you again, Gobber. You want your usual poisons? Uh, I'm good for now. We're actually here looking for something else. Oh. Well, what do you need? But inventory's a little small because of the magic band and all, but you know. We're actually looking to see if you can help us out with that. We're looking for a dupe for the magical bracelet, so... Uh, I don't really have anything like that. I've only been around for like a week. I haven't had time to crack it. Alright. Do you have any idea who might be making them, or who anybody else might sub be selling similar? Like, similar what? Like, counterfeits? Yes. Not really. Um, do you have some that, you know, are working? The we ones have that I have, I have hands attached to them, so, you know. It's been a bitch to take them off. We have two that aren't attached to anybody and are working. Ah. Uh, can I see them? Sure. Who has them? Sugma, Striker, which one of you? Uh, I'm not touching those. We gave them to a non-magic user, so I'm assuming Striker. Um, I believe Hennessy has them. I think they were put in her saddlebags. Uh, I don't have them in my inventory. I think Hunter has them. No, I have them. them. Oh, you do. All right. Yeah, I forgot to unmute my microphone. All right. So you pass okay. them over. He kind of picks them up and goes, "All right, let me look at them." He takes a couple minutes. Um, doesn't seem to be where we. Oh, how to put it? Careful with them. You can kind of, like, see him look at it, flip it around, bang it off the table, and take a bite at it. And then, eventually, he goes, okay, it seems like there's some runes that have been carved in here. And I've changed his voice, because I already forgot what it was. <laughs> that sucks. Sounds like it hurts your throat less to do this. Runes in here. I, I might be able to fuck with them, but, you know, I ain't gonna put it on my wrist. Hmm. So what you're saying is... If we found a big air quotes willing subject that we could use them to test on whether or not they do anything after you fuck with the runes, we might be able to get some uh, pretty realistic looking fakes. I would say, yeah. All right. Do we know if these uh, apparatus cause any harm to people who? Don't wield magic? Um, not really sure. Alright. Maybe that should be something we test along the way. Again, um, I don't want to put one on. None of these people want to put one on. It's still going to be up to you. Can I interject? What? Um, I feel like seeing as we only have two of them and he hasn't had much luck removing them from the hands that he has attached to the ones he currently has. Like, are we even going to be able to get it off our said tep subject? Mm hmm I don't know. Ow. You fucking snarky bastard. Hey, what? Fuck you, bitch, alright? So, what do you want me to do? You want me to try to fuck with it? What do you guys think? Do we let him experiment with it or not? Well, Dax, how, yeah. how highly do you recommend this man? Um, less of a tinkerer and more of a buying a lot of deadly shit from kind of person. I mean, it's worth a shot. I would mess with them myself, but I'd rather not uh, mess with things too much and end up unable to cast magic myself. Maybe we could try and identify the origins of the rune, or the runes, and maybe find an expert in them. I mean, whoever crafted them probably has other people of the same experience wearing them who are probably none too happy about it. Idea. 
We have two bands, do we not? Yeah. We could leave one behind with Gobber and bring one with ourselves. Hmm. Yeah, that would work. Wait, do any of you know who made these? Like, who designed them? Um, let's see here. Who would probably have info <coughs> on that or no? Uh, Ritz could do a arcana check. Um, would I have heard anything in okay. that spy days? No, I don't think you would. <laughs> That's a pretty lazy spy, so. Alright. Um, looking at the design of the runes yourself, um, it does have some sort of resemblance to uh, the person you were living with. I can't remember his name right off the top of my head. I'm trying to... Danior, I think. Yeah, Danior. Yeah. Yep. Um, it definitely has his style of rune crafting on it. Oh, dang. I might actually know the person who made these, but the thing is, he's he's kind of missing. So we might need to find him first. Missing, like, went to the bread store and on a dangerous road and is never coming back missing? Or something more like he left and didn't tell you about it? Missing as in searching for some sort of dangerous magical artifact and telling me not to follow him and he has not yet returned. And I have no clue where that could be. So, I'm at a loss right now. Sounds like your friend might have been lost at suspicious circumstances. Do you think this could potentially be the reason why he's involved with these things? I mean, it could be, but I'm not entirely sure. I think our best option at this point is to go forward with Stryker's plan and move forward with what information we do have. Mm. Alright, Sigma, what do you need? If they're runes, can we, like, just fuck with them until they're not runes anymore? You like, can try to, it's up to you guys all that. Carve, like, fuck you over it or something so they don't work? You can if you want. Are they carved in? Yeah, they seem to be more of a, like, <clears throat> board cast. So, the way that these are designed, um... It's kind of like, it, there's two halves and it's been pinned together on one side and it closes. And from what you can tell when it's closed, it magically seals from the two ends that touch. So the runes get connected when they... There's also runes on the interior as well. Yeah, so, like, what's the material? Does it seem like it would be difficult uh, it to... It does seem to be made of some sort of composite of a lead and... Um, metallic alloy like um, iron. So not super steel. easy to carve into. It could be. It might not be. Huh. Maybe we go bracelet hunting? I'm sure with the um, people trying to get people to register, there's still people walking around with these bracelets. So maybe we rob them. We could just try to smash the bracelets a bunch. See what happens. That could do something. Maybe rather than risking ourselves in the potential backfire of trying to deface the runes, we can try and gather intel on other people who have tried to do the same. I would imagine oh, many people have had the same thought. Gobber will speak up here and be like, Alright, so, I can fuck with it for, like, four gold. And I can get it tested for another six. Tested for what, Robert? To see if it worked or not when I fucked with it. Alright. Do we perhaps want to split the cost up among the group? Can do that. Sounds like uh, a good idea. I mean, he doesn't really know exactly what he's doing, so we could just smash it a bunch. Instead of getting his help. I feel you like could if risk it backfiring. Up, yeah, I feel like if it's all bashed up, whoever's inspecting bracelets is going to notice that it was tampered with. I mean, I can mend it back together. 
Yeah, I can. I can repair brakes, things like that. But I don't know if I can repair it to its original condition. Well, we'll hold on to the other one if you want to give it a go. I mean, at this point, we could, like, Dex said, probably rob someone else and get them. This is probably the best opportunity while it's still a fresh new concept. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll leave one here, and then we'll carefully allow Ritz to fuck with one. Don't put it on. I won't. With that, <laughs> I place um, a gold on the table. To... I'll do the same. I guess I'll put one gold down also. I don't want to give too much to this goblin. I'll flip the rest. So you're going to put down another seven? Yep. Alright. I got some money. I, I will put down a gold as well. I have not contributed yet. Right, I will so put down six. six. Alright. He goes, ah, cool. Give me about two minutes. He's going to take it. You can see him pull out a knife and just start carving into the runes. Um, after a couple minutes, you're going to see him point at the ogre. And he's going to point at one of the guys sitting at a chair. Ogre's going to walk over. Just pick him up by the shoulders. The guy's going to start freaking out like, Hey, what the fuck are you doing? It's like, just shut <laughs> up. Walks over. Garber's going to walk over and be like, Alright, here we go. Attach it to the guy's wrist. Um, it seems to close... And then immediately fall off. Ooh, that seems to have done something. Does the Thieves Guild sell duct tape? <laughs> Do we know if this man is a magic user? Um, you use magic? The guy looks and he's like, I do! You see him, like, wave his hand a little bit and a little hand pops up on the ground and starts running around, trying to run over to his, uh, like, table to grab something. Gobber just kind of, like, quickly stomps at it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Maybe we can find a way to make it at least hold on. So, this could be a, an option. Does it still look, like, at a glance that it's not tampered with? Yeah, so the way that he took his knife and scraped it, it seemed like he scraped the interior runes as well as the ones that are on either end of it when it clamps. Alright. So, so he, he pretty much defaced the runes is how it looks. So, as uh, Sugmad said, duct tape? Or maybe we can get Lizard Boy, can you join the two ends around someone's wrist? I can... I mean, I can't join them. Can you make them stick and together? I don't think I have anything that can do that right now. Do we know any shysty blacksmiths who are willing to turn the other way towards our tomfoolery? Weld it together? Do I know any sh shady blacksmiths? Horse glue? Um... <laughs> Not really. Do I know any shitty craftspeople in general? Um, again, this would be your contact for that. Um, even though he sells stuff like magic items, he does craft poisons and stuff like that. But no real crafters in your group. It's more of like a scavenged. Okay. Uh, what? Um, if we get Ritz his tools, would he be able to do it? Possibly. Does this bitch sell the tools he needs? This kind gentleman fella. Um, Hennessy, I believe you guys bought the tools, correct? No, they only bought clothes. Um, yeah, I think all we got was cloaks and ninja plague masks. Okay. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, he would sell Tinker's tools and stuff like that here. These tools. So what was it you needed, Ritz? Tinker's tools? Yeah. Tinker's tools is what I need for some of my class stuff. Uh, can I ask this fine gentleman if he sells any? Yeah, I got some. Um, can I persuade him to sell it to me for 30 gold? Can I yeah, to done. Me? Here. Alright, I'm gonna pass this to Ritz and say work your fancy magic boy. Oh, thank you. How much does it actually cost? 
Too late. Deal's done. Well, you said it was more than that at a regular store, so I'm taking it. Do, do, do. Getting broke. Poor shit. <sighs> All right, Red, start rolling those checks to make this a functional fake bracelet. Also, might as well ask Goofy Goober here if he's willing to uh, fuck with the other one. Yeah, I'll do it. It's going to cost you 20 gold, though. I mean, we, we can easily just carve out those runes. I have a dagger myself. All right. Good uh, luck with that. What if he just imitates what you just did by looking at the runes you already carved? Can I just persuade him to do it for four gold? I mean, I can do it for no gold. <laughs> you can persuade him for four gold if you want. Um, I'll reduce the check because he is a previous contact with you, but go ahead. That's a perception check. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They both start with P. Oh. So you make the argument for, you know, dropping the price, and he's just like, mm, nah. Yeah, I think 20 gold is my minimum now. Yeah, now that he knows he can do it, this is going to be a boom in business. How about, how about exposure? <laughs> I'll get him like 30 likes on Instagram. How about we just let the lizard play with it? Why He's don't already we volunteered. Him... Yeah. Didn't the nobleman steal a costume from one of the Inquisitors? Maybe that's something you'd like? Would you like to trade for an... Inquisitor mask and cloak. We don't have that on us. We can go get him. It, that could be interesting. Does somebody want to run and go get the stuff from him? Our way out's currently blocked, though, isn't it? Just shut the door. We can find the button again <laughs> now that we know where it is. Yeah. Assuming the button does the same thing a second time. I will go and fetch the Inquisitor's body. Uh, no, nope. I'll go. I'll go with. Uh, I'll go with Striker. That way, he's not running alone in the fucking sewers because he's blind as shit. Thank you. All right. So as you guys start heading out, yes, Hennessy. Uh, they're not going into the sewer, right? Not where the Florida meth gators are. You don't know about that. Yeah, you don't. Oh, well, either way, they're supposed to be going to find Garrett, not go into the sewer. Uh, we have to go through the sewer to get to Garrett. He's hanging out I know, but spud. you know what I mean. Just beware of meth gators. Uh, well, Again, that would be one of those, like, metagame things you would not know about. Well... Yeah, and I don't think we even know whoops. Garrett went to the surface. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you still think you're standing outside the door. Oh, uh, well, oopsies. Um, alright, moving on. Um, so who's going? Me and, uh, Stryker. All I'm right. gonna give Ritz a good old pat and say you work on that thing with your new toys, buddy. Yeah, I'll see what I can do. Alright. Uh, yeah, alright, we're gonna start moseying off. Okay. Um, I'm gonna not leave my money with Dax, but I'll leave my money with Ritz. <laughs> so he has six bucks in case he wants to do some window shopping. Uh, All right, thank you. Partial towards cobalt. <laughs> Wait, how much gold did you give me? Six gold. Okay. Buy yourself something nice. Didn't I get a couple of broken crossbows off corpses? Yes, you did. Can I try and sell them to uh, Gobber? Yeah, he'll pay you about a gold piece per. All right, I'll sell him a couple of crossbows. I think you did have two, so we'll take yeah. those. He's going to ask you, you want to buy anything else here? Looking at the table and stuff like that, you do have, like, poison vials. You do have, um, again, on this table and the shelves, on the table itself, um, there's the health potions and other sort of uh, vials and stuff like that. There seems to be some sort of books in there. On the shelves, you have um, what seems to be um, a crossbow as well as... Um, uh, sections of armor like a chain mail or a helmet, some gauntlets, that kind of stuff. And then on a weapons rack, he has uh, two swords, a spear, and a staff. Um, nothing I'm particularly interested in. Anything you guys want 
I'm gonna gesture to the, my remaining party members. Are the are any of the weapons magical, or are they just regular weapons? I sell magical items. What do you think? Hmm. <laughs> uh, what's special about this crossbow you got here? Well, this crossbow, um, to break it down, uh, he's going to describe that its penetration power is a lot higher. Um, it's also a lot more accurate. It is a plus one crossbow. Um, but it also has the ability to, um, on a crit, um, do additional poison damage. How much for the crossbow? 700 gold. Oh, how much for the poisons then? Uh, poisons, depending on the strength you would like. Um, he goes into describing them. There's like th three different variants here. Um, there's a single application one that does a D6 worth of poison. There's a vial that's a little bit larger. It has about 10 applicants uh, with a D6. And then there is one that is, those two are more like a green, a vibrant green. This one's more of a, like a swampy, murky, green-black combo. Uh, with the last one, it's in a very small vial. It's a single applicant, um, and it does 4d6 worth of poison damage. Um, the first one that I talked about is 10 gold. The second one is, uh, it would be 100 Last one is about 150. I'll buy uh, your smallest poison. Yeah, slides it over and hand, holds out his hand. Alright, I give him the 10 gold. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, at this point, I'll just, for sake of brevity, um, Striker and Sigmad have arrived. Uh, they kind of figured out that Birchwood wasn't standing out there, decided to look outside, and they see him out there with Spud. I'm assuming brushing Spud down, cleaning him up. Oh, he's such a good boy here. Eat and brush you off. You feel better. Don't worry. I won't bring you back down there. Spooky. So, uh, so Garrett. Holy crap, where'd you come from? Surprise. Uh, Underground. We found the guy. We found the guy. He uh, fucked with the bracelets. Ritz is trying to find a way to make him actually stay on. But uh, well, Dax is up there bartering your cloak and mask, so. For what? Uh, money. I, I think I'll sell my own wares. All right. All right. I figured that would probably be your answer, but... That wasn't the purpose. <laughs> You're not here. <laughs> Do you want us to babysit Spud so you can go down and sort the situation out? Uh, yes, I guess. Uh, could one of you show me where the entrance is? All right. I'll, uh, I'll hang out here if you want to take Striker back. Okay. Goodbye, Spud. I'm gonna, give a, I'm gonna give a stiff robot, robotic like pat of his mane. All right, give me a uh, animal handling. Oh god. Oh. Okay. He, he seems apprehensive of a big metal guy trying to touch him. He allows it though. Your little nuts and bolts didn't get kicked in. You're good. <laughs> Not the family gears. <laughs> All right, so Striker Birchwood, you re-enter in. Um, were in that time, Ritz, were you trying to tinker with anything? Um. So, can I tell what the runes say at all? Um. Give an Arcana check. Okay. I would even say you could do it at advantage if you'd like, because you do recognize okay. the formation of them. Oh, there we go. Okay, 23. Really good roll. Um, so, pretty much, the two that clamp onto one another is like a seal and rune. It causes the two to fuse together. 
the other ones on the interior, um, you see you, you recognize one as a rune of um, um, detect magic almost. When it goes off, uh, another rune will activate to uh, turn the bracelet a different color um, to signify, you know, someone has used magic while wearing this. Um, the last rune in there, though, you don't recognize. Um, even with the 23, it is pretty hard for you to distinguish what it is. Okay. Are there any runes on the outside I should be aware of? Nope. Other than the ceiling ones? Um, just the two ceiling, which are actually technically on the interior ends of the item that clamps. And then all the runes that you can physically see on there um, are all embroiled on the interior of the bracelet, so you wouldn't be able to see them once it's clamped on okay. you. Yeah, so I'm just gonna take, like, my Tinker's tools, I guess, and just kind of, like, scrape out the interior runes, leaving the uh, ceiling ones at the moment. On the first one, or the second one? Uh, the one that hasn't been messed with yet. Okay. So, go ahead and roll me a Tinker's check. Okay. Um, did you set up your Tinker's tools? I think so, yeah. Um... Yeah, I have it set for intelligence. Okay, yep, that works for me. Oop, there we go. Alright, with an 18, uh, you start messing with them. Um, even though that the metal that's on it is pretty durable, it still has that lead, like, pliability to it. So you're able to work them enough to distort them. Nice, nice. Alright, so you were able to mess with the runes, uh, leaving the ones that seal. Yeah, I might mess with them later, but I'll leave them intact for now. Mm, okay. Uh, Birchwood, at this point, you would be entering in. Uh, I'm going to head straight for Ritz. Yeah, hello there. Is that the amulet you're working on? Uh, yes, it is. Uh, what kind of headway have we made? I've gotten rid of all the runes on the inside that detect magic and change color when uh, it senses magic. And there's runes that cause the device to seal around the wrist, but I have kept those intact right now. Uh, at least until we find a way to seal them ourselves. Um, have you seen if these can be magically fixed? Uh, how so? Might I see it? Uh, yes, go ahead. I hand it to him. I cast Mending on it. Um, with the type of work that's been done on it, the Mendon does not seem to take hold, because it has been removed versus broken. Um, I would even say as far as, because you have magic background, you can actually see that the runes don't even reform. If anything, the metal kind of comes back to life a little bit, but the runes themselves would be whatever damage condition that they're in. Okay. Interesting. Well, it appears mending will not work on these, um, which, I mean, that could play into our, our favor. Yes, it could. And the other bracelet thing the goblin messed with, uh, and he's messed with all the runes with his dagger, and it appears that it doesn't detect magic or anything, but the problem is it doesn't stay on. Could we potentially take the bracelet that our goblin friend here took and um, dismantled for us and cut the... Is it made of leather or is it like all metal? Like his actual bracelet itself leather. 
the the magic bracelets. Yeah. Yeah, they are made out of like metal? a. It's all metal. It's made out of like a mixture between a lead and a um, like a steel or an iron. You can't really distinguish if it's either or. All right. Um, could we potentially break the um ceiling runes on either side of the bracelet, and then mend the metal to itself to affix it? Yeah, that could maybe work. I think you're maybe you're point, overthinking this. Um, the amulets, if we're able to make it so that they can't detect magic or alert anyone that we're using it, I mean, what would the harm be of wearing it? True. It's just trying to find a way to fix the broken one at this point in order to have it stay attached. Does anyone have, like, glue or something? Hmm. If somebody wants to give me a percentile dice and tell me if they're high or low, there might be an item that I can throw into the magic shop. Hmm. Yeah, I'll do it, I guess. Um, yeah, you do it. My, my, I'm no good with percentile dice. Brett knows this. <laughs> yeah, I'll aim for high. Oop. That was not high. Uh, so yeah, look it on the shelves with your Arcada abilities. You don't see anything that would stick out to help you on that. I do have rope on me. Could we potentially maybe take a piece of the rope and lash the bracelet together? Even just for a temporary dupe? We could try. It'd be a bit obvious that something was going on with it, but I guess it's better than nothing. So I guess I take um, a small portion of the rope out and I like unwind uh, the end of it and take a small like string piece. And I just try and kind of, like, tie the bracelets to itself. And then kind of hold it out and be like, anyone want to slip it on? Um, looking at how it, uh, after you put it together, why don't you give me, like, a generic, give me a generic dex check. So just go to your dex box mm -hmm. and hit it. Hello. Okay. Um, so with that being said, with a 21, you're able to, you like, roll the fibers apart to get a very thin strand, and you're able to tie it quite tight. So it does look almost natural. There is a reduced chance of them seeing it like that, but if they were to try to investigate it, it would be a little bit harder for them to figure it out. At a quick glance. Yeah, I I guess I'll try this one for now. My hand is the newly fixed bracelet to Ritz. All right. So, how do you put it on Ritz? Um, I. Oh. I try to slide it on. Oh, Wait, is it going to be too big for my wrist? <laughs> it is a little big, but you're able to, like... It would just be catching on your wrist when you finally get it on. You have to, like, shove your hand through it a little bit. It does take a couple seconds, but once it's on, it's pretty loose-fitting. Okay. Yeah, we'll hold the other one with us for now. Maybe give it to Sugma when we get out. We'll see how it goes. So Dax, is there anything you want to do before we head out? No, I'm all set. Alright, then I guess we're ready to go back uh, up to Spud. 
Returning to the Chunky Boy. Alright. As you guys leave, Copper's like, nice doing business with you. See you guys later. Okay. Yeah, I wave back to him and keep walking. Alright. Uh, easy Bye. enough to exit the sewers. Um, Birchwood, you don't see any more signs of the uh, scaled creature with inside the sewer. Yeah, I'm gonna tell the party to uh, keep keep their limbs out of the water. There's definitely some kind of creature in it. Oh, that's that's unsettling. Well, the good news is I don't think anyone's going to find those bodies. <laughs> yeah, I bet they made a good snack for this whatever creature this is. All right, exit and Spud's still up there with Sigmad. Giving him pats. Uh, is there anything you guys would like to continue to do? I believe you have items to pick up during the next day. Uh, it is starting to get quite dark, or not quite dark. Uh, sun is setting at this point. Hmm. Well, I um, think uh, I should let all of you know that we'll have uh, new outfits as of tomorrow to help disguise. As, uh, as well as a job that we may be able to do to make some quick cash in the meantime. It appears there's some nearby giants, trolls, something. I don't, I'm going to pull out the, uh, the piece of paper I ripped off the wanted board. Um, hill giants is what it was. Anywhere from, I believe it was two to three of them. Yeah. Uh, down at the... Andalwood, yeah. yep. Um, out down by that town, uh, they seem to come from the swamp and harass the town. Ooh, I haven't gotten the chance to study giants before. This could be cool. Is fighting involved? I sure hope so. Excellent. I am all for it. <laughs> All right, uh, Maybe we try and find someone who can speak giant before we just storm in there and start slaughtering. Shouldn't these giants be speaking common? They'll be speaking nothing when I'm done with them. Well, I, I think our friend here has a point. I mean, we can't just kill anything that you know, would uh would kill us on sight. I mean, that would just be unfair, right? I suppose. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> if we go killing unprompted, well, I guess we could consider the attacks on the city prompted, but we would not be much better than the very things we are trying to change ourselves now. I don't have any way to talk to them. It's worth looking into. I agree. My only method of communication is violence. <laughs> then uh, you're going to have to remain mute for a little while there, bud. Okay. <laughs> Should we Go. maybe make our way to the town? and do some inquiries about the damage these giants have done, and maybe spend the night in the area? Uh, we should probably stay here. It's like, what, six days out? You all have your map. Did you ask if somebody has a map? Yeah, we're so we're going from the Silver City to what... City. And a wood swamp itself. And a wood swamp. Um. Didn't you say about each dash is like a day of travel or something? Yeah. Okay. And that does factor in with uh, Spud. That's like your average day travel. And if we cut through the path, um, instead of heading towards Trance, go straight to the swamp. Will it take us more time, or we end up with an encounter? 
Um, you could end up with encounters. Um, there's various things, different types of terrain. I know it looks like grasslands, but there could be forests. There, there's technically sprawling hills on plains from the Silver City to that like first section of a uh, road. If you cross over that, it becomes more like a little bit wooded um, kind of area. And then, okay. like the Enderwood Swamp is just like a landmark. It's more. It is the only swamp within this kingdom. All right. So we think we probably head towards Anderwood instead of Trance, because Anderwood is the town that put out the bounty. Yeah. Makes sense to me. The path we'd have to take. Um... All right. I think we should grab our disguises tomorrow and then depart. I agree. Yeah, I don't want to stay in this city any longer than I need to. All right, so are you guys getting a room at an inn, or are you going outside the city and dealing with the check-in process again? Uh, fuck the check-in process. Let's get it. Let's let's get it in. Um, yeah, that'd probably be best. So there's multiple inns. Are you guys looking for cheap or comfortability? I can sleep um, on the floor. Actually, I'm gonna see. Can I pull a uh, pull a favor with the family household? Um, give me your percentile. Wait, I sleep standing up. Alright. So, you believe, you strongly believe that, yes, you could possibly pull a favor. Um, these favors are starting to become thin and few but uh you believe that you could probably get at least one night stay with inside the um one one of two places actually thinking about it there is a manor with inside the city and then there's the like household um i can't think of the word embassy with inside the keep you probably get one at either or all right, I'm going to look towards Hennessy and say, uh, I understand taverns probably aren't best for you. Um, mm, they draw a little too much attention. If you wish, I, I can try to set something up with one of the local manors, or I will camp with you if that's what uh, you see fit. We would be the easiest to get back into town, but um, it seems safer in numbers as of recently. Agreed. Are you okay with staying in a, uh, a tavern overnight? If there's room for me, I'll sleep wherever I will. Very well. Alright, so what's the current plan? I think we're gonna go find a cheap tavern. Yep. Yeah. Alright. For the five standardish humanoids, um it's only gonna cost you uh it would be five silver to store spud in a stable. Um it's another silver. Hennessy, um if you want a room it's going to cost you um, two silver just because of your size and they're afraid of broken furniture. If you want to do a stable, it would be one silver. So really cheap. Uh, it comes with no food, no nothing. It, the beds at this place are like just, um, what are they, futons from like, think of like Japan style. They're just going to throw it on the ground. Hostile um. kind of environment. I'll stay in the stable and keep an eye on Spud for the night. Anyone want to pay for my room? I'll pay for yours since you gave me your gold. Yeah. Um, it's more, like I said, like a hostel, so it's one large room. There's no real, like, okay. individual. It's, you're paying for a bed. 
So is it five silver for all of us, or five silver each? Uh, it's one silver for each humanoid. Uh, pretty much for okay. everybody here, including the Storm of Spud and the Stable for Hennessy. Um, it would be, what, one, two, seven. three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, seven silver pieces. So less than a gold. Okay. Yeah, I'll pay for myself and Sugma. <laughs> uh, I'll put my silver forward for the stable for me. All right. Uh, as long as you guys account for it, you're going to do whatever which way. I'll put so my you silver all... in. So I all... kind of turn to... Yep, no, go ahead. I, I turn to the group and I say, um, I have rations enough for everyone if need be in the morning. Yeah, I have rations too. And we could go find somewhere to eat if you guys want. But we should have enough rations to cover it. If we don't. Get a good meal in the morning, we'll get our clothes and we'll get the heck out of here, because we're probably going to be eating rations for fucking days. That reminds yeah. me that we're going to give um, Dalton some food and water. Yep. Um, before you guys bed down for the night, is there anything you guys would like to talk about? Oh yeah, Sugma, I, uh, I worked with the uh, other bracelet thingy, and I've made it so uh, it doesn't detect magic or change colors or anything, but I haven't gotten rid of the sealing runes on it. So if you put it on, it'll seal around your wrist. And we have right. uh, as long we as have it's not the gonna... one Dauber Smash, too, if you want that one. No, as long as it's not going to fuck with my magic, I, I don't mind. So I, I don't will extend believe it will. my wrist and allow you to pop that on. Alright, I pop it on. And I'm going to... I'm gonna attempt to do a spell and see how that goes. Let me see if I have anything that's not gonna nuke the whole fucking place. <laughs> I'll cast um, Thermoderba Derba Derba. Thermoderba. The one thing none of us can ever pronounce. Thermaturgy. Uh, black? No. Oh, the iPad's such a dick. I'm gonna make little fireballs that don't do any damage. Nah, that's not how that one works. Yeah, you can make you little can... flashy lights. You cause flames. You can do thunder. I think you can change your eye color too. Uh, oh, is there a candle in here? Yeah. Yeah, see, so I can just fuck with that candle. All blah, right. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. It doesn't work? Yep, no issue. All right. I feel a little more confident. And I got a sick bracelet. This um, cool. When you did clamp it though, you did see like a slight red glow come from it and then it quickly dissipated. So that's probably the ceiling room collapsing. Yep. Does it look cool? It looks like a lead slash iron bracelet. Does it clash with my outfit? A little bit. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you could say it's pretty metal looking. I'm alright with that. <laughs> Except. Sister, you disappointed me. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else anybody would like to cover? I think I'm all set. No, I'm good. Alright, so food, outfits, and hill giant hunting in the morning, I guess. <laughs> um, Is there anything that we need to accomplish in this city before we leave? Any uh, Anything, Garrett, you need to do with your family? No, uh, I believe the sooner we leave, the better. Alright, the party goes to bed down for a while. Alright, let's, uh, let's get some leveling done. Nice. Uh, we're just gonna go down the current marching order. Uh, let's see here. So that would be Dax, um, do you know how to level up a character on roll 20? No. Alright. So, bring up your character sheet. Up. Which you should already have. Yep, type in 300. Hold on, I gotta get to... It's fighting me, hold on. Yep. Alright. And through 300. Alright, so there's like a little hammer and mace? Yes. You're gonna click that. 
And Look she'll it. start your level in... Uh, it's a, yeah, I'm on levels now. Alright, I'm gonna pull up just a blank character sheet so that way I can go through this with you and make sure it's all accurate. <sighs> do you want to pull up mine? That way you can do it. Uh, way. yeah, sure. I can do it like that. Um, so... Alright, so you're gonna hit next. Okay. Alright, from here, um, where you should be able to see your class, should be rogue. Yes. And it'll say, like, level 1 plus 1 equals level 2. Yes. Okay, that's all set. So you're going to want to hit roll. Alright. So you got 3 HP, so that's all going to factor in automatically. Okay. Um, or, I should have clarified this, did you want a multi-class? Do you want to pick up a different class, or do you want to stick with rogue? I think I'm good with rogue. Okay. Um, once you hit the roll button, hit next. Then. And it should have uh, features. Uh, it says cunning action starting at second level. You, your quick thinking and agility allow you to move and act quickly. You can take a bonus action on each of your turns in combat. This action can be used only to, ta to take the dash, disengage, or hide action. So, just to help describe that a little bit. So you could take a new normal movement, right, which is 30 feet. Yeah. And then you could take a bonus action if you wanted to for an additional 30 feet instead of taking your action. So you would be able to move a total of 60 and then take your normal attack action if you wanted to. Okay. I like that, yes. <laughs> or you could use it to hide. Oh, correction. That doesn't work like that. Okay. Uh, no, no, it doesn't because it takes the dash action as your bonus action. Yeah, so. but if you use your two actions and forfeit your attack. Yeah, I guess. Um, so, something about hiding. If you shoot someone in the face and then you try to hide in the same spot, it's not going to be as effective. If it okay. even works at all. Um... Dash, hide, and what was the last one? Disengage. Disengage. So that's another big one for you. Uh, when someone's standing, like, right next to you, and mm -hmm. you want to get the fuck out of there. But you don't you want them to hit you in the back. Yeah, you don't want to get hit. You take the disengage action as your bonus action. Then you move, and then you still have an action to do other things. Okay. All right. So that's that description. Uh, if you hit next, what does it say? Uh, before leveling, after leveling, and then features, feats, spells. Alright, so you are done. You just keep hitting next until it's, uh, so you're on review. Uh, yeah. I just hit apply changes. Yep, apply changes. There you go. Alright. You wanna do my mullets right here? Uh, yeah, since I already have Sigmat up. Um, yeah. so we'll go back to start. Roll Hit four, next. and you have good luck. Roll. Seventy. Shit. Alright, so that was a 1, so we're going to re-roll it. I'll take it. Alright, so that's a 6. Uh, your features, you get to choose Eldritch Invocations. Yeah! Uh, Did you want to take the one that gives your Eldritch Blast oomph? Yes. Extra oomph, please. I think it's... Spear? Maybe I'll be nope. able to Spear's hit something. Spear 300 feet. Agonizing Blast, I think is the name Thank of it. Thank you. Yep. You know, I only rolled a fucking Warlock for... Six months, you think I'd remember anything? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. All right, so that's we there. played that one for longer than six months. Uh, I guess it was closer to a year, um, but it was the whole fucking just all thing. So that was yeah. Uh, uh, uh. I'm trying to look for your other one that we were talking about, um, which I don't think you get at this level. Mask of many faces gives you. Um, Click it and read it. That gives you um, Disguise Self for free. Ah, uh, you know, that would be kind of handy. Alright, so you want that? Yeah, because I'm kind of wanted here. Okay, then we're going to hit next. So I get um, only one more spell do, 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 do. and one more cantrip. Oh, no, uh, I get no more cantrips and one more spell. Do I already have fucking... Oh, Disguise Self came with the thing. Never mind. Um. Yeah, no, that's the one you just picked up. But that's from the invocation. That's what it's saying right there. 
I like Hellish Rebuke. Is this the whole list right here? Mm-hmm. It's short and fucking dopey? Yep. Hellish Rebuke. Um, you sure that's what you want? Uh, I like to punish people who whack me in the fucking face. Um, with your setup, I'd recommend Hex. But I already have Hex Curse. Is it the yeah. same shit? No, different. Uh, you place a curse on target using the spell. You deal an extra 1d6 necrotic damage to the target whenever you hit the attack with an attack. So that's your weapon or your Eldritch Blast or anything. Gives you an extra d6. So I could stack up Hex and Hexblade Curse. Yeah, and, unfortunately and... it does take, um, what is it? One bonus action. I don't know what your other one takes. I think it's also a bonus action. So yeah. you, you would have to stagger turns and stuff like that, but you only get the Hexblade Curse once per day anyways. I'll take, I'll take Hex. You know what? Fuck it. If I'm gonna go with the Hexy shit, me and my pentagrams are gonna fuck you up. Okay. And then there's your review. Uh, can I get like seven feet? No. Oh, shit. Alright, I will refresh my character sheet. Actually, I'll just reopen my character sheet. Alright, uh, Striker. Would you like to go next? Sure. Uh, uh, geez. All right, so start this out by going over to launch level and character mancer. Is that what was? Yep. You already put your three hundred in. Three hundred. I, I. That's the part that I missed from Emma. Where did I put the three hundred in? Where is this? In your experience. Section. Oh, three points right there. So I can just type it in. Yep. Oh, not three. Three hundred. And it'll give me the little icon to launch the character mancer. Yep. Got it. All right. I am here. All right. So go ahead and roll through your HP. HP. Got it. And so hit next after the intro, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. And then so. Uh, unless you want a multi-class, I should uh, also clarify that. If you want to, then you're gonna go a little bit further down. No, I think I'm fine. I'm fine with Fighter for now. Okay. Fighter's pretty flexible. So that you're just going to want to roll your HP. Alright. Nice. Uh, then you're going to hit next to features. Was it the D8? D10? Uh, I think he gets a D10. Barbarians get D12. I think Jeremy gets a D6. Not sure about... Alright, level 2 action surge. Starting at second level, you can push yourself beyond your normal limits for a moment. On your turn, you take one additional action on top of your regular action and a possible bonus action. Once you use this feature, you're short or long rest. So, pretty much how a lot of fighters use it is as a extra attack action. Hmm. Okay. Cut him in half again! Yes. Alright, that sounds good. Next... What step are you on right now? I think you should be on review. Yep. Yep, and then you just hit finish. Beautiful. Oh yeah, apply changes. Bango. Uh, Done. You're Ritz, so you're next. Woo. If I'm on the thing now, come on. There we go. Ooh, that's okay. Full digits. Yeah, and I am going with Artificer. Okay. So that would be the biggest thing. You're going to want to make sure you choose a multi-class if you want a multi-class before rolling HP. Because it will give you max possible when doing multi-classing. Alright. Yeah. So he is multi-classing? Yeah. It's the best time to start it when you're already just level 2 so you yeah. can even them out. Yes. So I am. Uh, I gotta pick my infusions now. Ooh. If you want a minute to read through those, uh, we can jump to Hennessy and then we'll come, cut back to you because hers is gonna take a second. All right. Hennessy, would you like to go? Sorry, I had to unmute. Yes. All right. Ah, uh, I just need to hit three hundred under experience points, right? Yep. Yeah? Yes. Okay, sorry. I muted for a second. I muted you guys for a second, which was fun. 
Alright. Now what? Levels? Yep. Okay. Me? A roll? Yep. Unless you want a multi class, which I don't think you do. No. Nice. Pretty good average so far. Cool beans. Uh, now do I just hit next? Uh, yep. Okay. Uh, I have reckless attack. This is new stuff, right? Yep. <laughs> okay, yeah, I have reckless attack, which is, um, starting at the second level, you can throw aside all concern for defense to attack with fierce desperation. Desperate. English. Uh, when you make the first attack on your turn, you can decide to attack recklessly. Doing so gives you advantage of this melee weapon attack rolls using strength during this turn. But attack rolls against you have advantage until your next turn. And I also have danger sense. Danger, Will Robinson. Um, at the second level, you gain an uncanny sense of when things nearby act as they should be giving you an edge when you dodge away from danger. You have advantage on dexterity saving throws against effects that you can see, such as traps and spells to gain this benefit. You can't be blinded, defeated, or incapacitated. There you go. And then I think you're all set. I think you're just down to the uh, recap, and then you're done leveling. Okie dokie. All done. Ritz, do you need another second? Um, hey, Jeremy, do you have any spells that you do spell attacks for, as opposed to having them make a saving throw? No, I do not. Not yet. Okay. Yeah, then I think I am all set for my infusions. Which ones are you taking? Uh... The Replicate Magic Item, Goggles of Night, that one, and then Enhanced Weapon, Enhanced Defense, and Repeating Shot. Nice. I, I only get to use two of them, or have two of them active at once, though, so that's sad. So is it like, because I've never really dealt with an Artificer, to be honest. So <laughs> is it like um, a spellbook kind of deal, you pick two per day? Uh, no, it's like, uh, I have to m spend a long rest putting the infusion on an item and I can only have two infusions going at once and if I do a third one the first infusion I did goes away okay excellent nice to know and for my spell I think I'm gonna take cure wounds just so we can have two people that can heal excellent and I think that wraps your class up correct Yes. Alright. Birchwood. Hey -o. Um, may I recommend you choose something with a light armor class ability and get the multi class out of the way so you can wear your armor. Yeah, um I'm trying to figure out how to multi class. I'm looking at it right now. It's if you're at the HP roll, you should be able to scroll down a little bit and I'll have multi class ability with an arrow. Because uh. I don't think not hitting level 20 isn't a big deal for your class. I don't think you get a big perk at level 20. If he takes fighter, he can just wear any armor. Right? Yeah, any armor. The downfall is is he'll be picking up feet a level later if he wants feats. Right. But, you know, the big upside is he'll be able to wear fucking armor. Oh, a fucking massive a fucking AC. Alright, so out of this I'm gonna get armor proficiencies light, medium and shields, simple and martial weapons. I will also get lay on hands and divine sense. Alright, so what class did you pick? Uh, Paladin, I believe? That is Paladin, yes. Excellent. So, with that being said, what god have you decided? So that's just it. Um, I haven't decided. It has chosen me. Okay. Which god? 
I don't rightly know, sir. I don't know who's chosen me. I just know I have these powers. Okay. I will it's a force. figure that out. <laughs> yeah, it's it's Spud. He's secretly a god. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I could work shit in. You know me. Uh, is he being a paladin gonna, you know, have an issue with us, you know, murdering everyone? No, uh, he will have to be at least a neutral. He cannot go evil. Uh, just to help you know this as well, if you do betray your alignment, um, you will become anti-paladin. There, okay. I, I found information on that, so. Yep, that works out. So what would your alignment be so that way I can keep track of that? Um, I think it's on my character sheet. Here, I'll pull it up real quick while you're finishing up. Oh, no, no. Oh, it right, brings me to your character master, so I'm going to back out of that. So, what's left? Level up Spud. Uh, Spud does not get leveled up. Level up Dalton. What about Dalton? Um, I'm actually going to change that class. I'm not going to go with Paladin. Okay. I'm still looking at it. Uh, I'm going to cross-class Bard. Bard? Uh, <laughs> Bard gets light armor, I believe, correct? Bard enters the party, <laughs> Yes, it is. It is light, but it also uh, gives the party the benefit of having uh, more support. More support, and it gives you the um, ability to do bardic inspirations, I believe. Yes. Yes. So you have bark inspirations related to your charisma modifier, okay. I'm going to take light and minor illusion as my cantrips. Um, so Jeremy, what is your spell focus for your bard? Uh, I believe I went with the horn. Alright, so you need to acquire a horn? Yes. Alright, I'm just going to look up in the book. Instead of RP and you finding a music shop and all that, I'm just going to give you the price that it would be sold at. And well, it's uh, it's not going to matter right now because uh, I'm broke. Uh, you can plead to Ritz, who has some gold from me. I think he spent it. I have four gold. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nobleman. I, I won't plead. Won't can you roll up like a newspaper and toot through that? <laughs> Oh, right. So everybody goes to bed. During the night. Stryker. You have a dream. The first oh. dream you've ever had. Oh, shit. Or at least as far as you can remember. It starts off with you in a... Out front of a uh, small wooden shack in a field of grain. That is uh, currently grown. Uh, just kind of looking around, um, you see a human woman with a little human girl. Uh, you feel yourself approach them. Um, you don't hear anything, you don't smell anything, you don't feel the warmth of the sun. Um, what you do have happen is uh, you reach out your hand, and instead of it being the Warch Forge hand, it's human-esque, pink and skin color brown hair on your arm you reach out you pat the little girl's head you kiss the woman and as you turn around on this long road you see a long column of soldiers 
as well as farmhands that are slowly being added to this group, marching on. As you walk away, you see the little girl and the woman sobbing, crying. As you add yourself into this column, your back feels heavy with gear, and you start hearing the clattering of metal items as you awake. Whoa. You strike us over here having wet dreams, bruh. What? <laughs> Alright, wow, that's something. <laughs> I almost said, like, thank you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the dream, bro. Birchwood. As you sleep, you too have a dream. Not more of a dream, but more of being spirited away. You find yourself back in the Fae. In front of a gentleman that you recognize as being one of the champions of the Fae world. Uh, you do actually have control over this scenario, so is there anything you'd like to do? I'd give a slight bow to him. Um... Oh, he is. He, uh, returns the bow. Am I being summoned? Uh, he looks at you, he smiles, and he goes, yes. The tournaments are soon to be here once more. I see. I'll gather a group and make her ready. Very good. Is there anything you may need before you leave? Well, there is a conundrum where I'm at. They seem to be... working their dealings around the magic, and... some of the people I bring to this tournament may be... using these items. I, I don't want them to be able to be tracked here. Yeah. Gives a big smile, and... Nods his head. That should not be an issue. Very well. Well, the fate. He uh, presents to you a uh, horn carved out of a hard wood. Use this sparingly to summon us if you have any further questions that we may be able to help you with. I'm honored. As quickly as you arrived, you were turned back to where you were, laying in the bed, as everyone else has continued sleeping around you. Just continue on my meditation. Do I have the horn in my hand? Um, yes, it is still in your hand. As you were holding it when you left, it is the way that you were holding it when you have returned. Okay, I'm going to tuck that away. Um, so with that being said, you have three charges on this horn that allows you, specifically just you, to transfer to the Fey world. Gotcha. Um, I'll also allow you to use it as your spell focus, uh, just state when you're using a charge. Okay. Can do. Sweet. All right. Everybody else awakes. No cool dreams for the rest of us? Nope. Fuck. Aww. <laughs> um, uh, there would be one more thing that I should have covered. Um, Birchwood. Yes. When you had coming out of your meditation after you've been spared it away. Um, you do find two more items in your hand. The cloak and the mask. The cloak and the mask of... 
of the uh, Inquisitor. Um, since Birchwood, you only need four hours, and everybody else needs at minimum six, and you weren't spared to wait that long. Um, when you come out of your meditation, you have those items in your hand. Anything you want to do with them? Uh, just gonna put them away. I'm gonna look to where I put them away last time. Um, they seem to be no disturbance to it. Um, if anything, uh, I'm assuming you port, put them in your bag? I probably put them in a saddle bag. On Hennessy? Or Spud? Spud. Okay, so when you go back to go put them on, uh, you do notice that they are, the saddle bag is unclasped. Okay. I'm gonna put them back in the saddle bag and clasp it. Alright. Uh, you go back, wait a little bit. Striker's the first one to come to. Um, he seems a little distraught when he first wakes. But, you know, calms himself down. Uh, eventually, everybody else starts getting up. What would the party like uh, to do? After, I'm going to go up to their room <laughs> so I'm present. <clears throat> yep, um, entering in, it, this is just a single floor. You kind of enter in, walk over. They're all just getting up. All right. I just wanted to make sure I was actually present. So, where to now? Uh, we should be heading to the tailors to uh, get our disguises. All right. So what are these disguises exactly? Uh, well, I gave a general description. We'll see what he came up with. Okay. Did you specify that Dax and I aren't exactly humans? No, but I'm, I'm sure that he'll leave plenty of room to accommodate. All right. Let's go and see then. Speaking of, I think uh, most of you should remain outside. Um, that way, no one really knows who these disguises are for. All right. Yeah, sounds fair. Would you like me to come into the shop with you again? Yes, it would be nice to have backup just in case. All right, so you proceed to head out to the tailor. All right, so you proceed out there. Um, on your travels there, though, there are vendors that have uh, opened up their shops. It is early morning. Sun has been up for probably only an hour or so. Um, you smell, like, fresh meat pies. Um, you see, like, a little bakery cart with uh, fresh breads and pastries and cupcakes. Or not cupcakes, uh, muffins and that sort of stuff. Can I get me a Danish with some copper? Yeah, uh, it'll cost you about two copper pieces, and you get this, like, pretty it's hefty it's heavy but um it's more fill into bread kind of hefty you know That's what i mean the best kind of danish yep. i'm gonna friggin mouth that right down you guys buy your own i'm broke <laughs> um get into the tailor shop um it hasn't quite opened yet but the gentleman in the shop does see you and he opens the door and he goes ah birchwood here to pick up your order Yes, indeed. Very good. Uh, he passes over these uh, six bundles, um, all covered with paper and tied with a nice twine. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, if these don't fit exactly, I could have them altered. Um, as long as I have the specifications and as long as it's within today. I would appreciate well. it if you didn't come back in three months and I'm all tattered. And... I understand. Uh, I will be on my way, though. Thank you. Enjoy your day. I shall leave, return to the party, and start passing them out. 
All right. Um, pass I'm them still up. With him. <clears throat> so you had ordered six cloaks and six six masks. <clears throat> um, the cloaks are made out of the heavier material, a little more weather resistant, more sturdy for good long travel. Um, the bass are okay. They're not the world's best, but with the materials that he had, which was in abundance, but still the very vague descriptions of how you wanted it, he did the best he can. Um, they're, again, not pretty good. They almost realistically look like ski masks. Um, It'll work. Why, why don't we go down the line? Uh, Birchwood and Hennessy, since you were there, your clothing fit you. You don't have to worry about it. Uh, Ritz, percentile dice. Okay. I'm going to go for low this time. Oh my god, no. Okay, striker. <laughs> I'm going to go... Hmm. <laughs> god, I don't know here. This is just a health factor in any alteration time, so how much longer you'll be staying in here. I'm going to go with low. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. <laughs> God damn it. Sugmad? So I'm gonna go with low because that's my, my fucking shit. Okay. Just barely. So, it's slightly baggy, but, you know... I'll put my belt around it. Yeah, yeah, it's it's workable, Dax. I will go with low. <laughs> damn it. Okay, so... Ritz. Um... We try to put on your mask. It doesn't have holes for your horns. Uh, the cloak, it's about a foot and a half longer than it should be. So it's dragging on the ground. Uh, let's see, your striker. Wonderful. Yours is actually too small. Um, since you guys had such a large failure each, but they were so close, I could say you probably could swap them and be good. Cool. Perfect. I'll take strikers. Strikers will take Who's? No, 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 no. Ritz. Did I say Dax? No, you said Striker and Ritz. Alright. Yeah. Dax, um, your mask is actually kind of more form-fitting to you. Uh, your ears are a little bunched up, but not that bad. Your cloak, though, it's it's a lot smaller than you would expect. It's about to the small of your back. Alright. It's almost like a short cape, if anything. Lovely. Well, So, looking them over, Birchwood, you do realize that after everybody kind of swaps up a little bit, there's a couple altercations that need to be done. Probably no more than an hour's worth of work. Alright, so the only one that needs alterations is Dax's? Because the other two uh, switched? Yes. Yes. Uh, does Ritz's mask need to be fixed? Um, yeah, or you just kind of shove it through his horns and deal with it. Yeah, I can make holes for my horns. No big deal. Okay. So, Ritz, why don't you come with me and we'll get yours altered. All right. Or, sorry, not Ritz, uh, Dax. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna follow in. So, we'll head back in. Okay, heading back in. He tells you it's going to be about an hour. Um, not too long. Um, so you guys have one last hour. I'm going to buy another Danish. I'm going to buy another Danish. <laughs> I'll go just eat somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I'll go with Ritz and we'll go search for a cart with suitable food. No, these Danishes are fucking delicious, bro. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick with uh, Hippolyta and Ritz. Just, yeah. I don't know. Sometimes food looks nice. Yeah, let's get some actual breakfast. Mm, right. <clears throat> um, as you guys are having your breakfast, it's not gonna cost you much. Uh, five copper per. Um, you get All a right. decent meal. If you choose to eat, if you want to eat your trail rations, eat your trail rations. Um, you do hear the faint yelling of a town scryer. Um, 
just kind of reading out daily reports and that kind of stuff, you know. Stuff like, Hill Giants and Ender's Swamp still rampage. Black Rose Bandit, Roger Despero, captured, scheduled for execution in Dragon. Dragate. Drugate. Drugate, yep. Um. Uh, do we know as our characters that Dax is associated with Roger? I don't think she's ever openly spoke about it, so only Dax would know. Uh, I tried to, you know, convince her. Uh, that, that is true, so that yeah, one that one would pop up for you. Dwarven army spotted near uh, Glofness. Uh, possible conflict coming soon. I think of the words. Oh well, fuck it. These are all in very far away directions. Yeah. So we have to prioritize now, shit. Well, you don't have to prioritize crap. Um, did they mention a date for said execution? Mm, just in a month. In a month? Yep. Oh, so we got time to dick around. Okay. Uh, so, Birchwood, you know that the Black Rose Bandits are typically allocated themselves out in the Enderwood Swamps anyways. Um, and again, that they're known for taking tax collector, uh, the tax collections, as well as, um, supply lines and that kind of stuff. They haven't really gone out to full murder in levels, but they have been known to take out a couple guards and stuff like that as need be, from their point of view. Um, you've heard rumors from the Peregrine that they are more of a Robin, Robin hood nisk kind of um, vigilante group, but the nobility and average town people have been told that they are more of a bandit group, cutthroats, that kind of thing. Nudge Dax with an elbow like, hey, our mutual friend. You know that one we both know? Yes. Did you hear the did you hear the news? Yes. Alright. You know, Drogate's right right there. We could go and you know. Uh what's up, Marshwood? I was gonna wait till their conversation ends and then then you can come in. Have I heard of what roads exactly were hit by these guys? Or, um, yeah, you would have probably heard that. It's really been towards the southern region. They really don't come up more north. It's been like um, supply lines from the Silver City to um, Trans, like the fort out there. Uh, so some military goods, that kind of stuff. Um, they've hit Enderwood quite a bit, but they're also, Enderwood is run by the, um... The religious group? No. I thought it was, that's why Jeremy was all giddy to... No, 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 that's, uh, Innistrad. Uh, 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 city of, no, it's a town of Enderwood. Oh, the Sithrith. That is correct. They are... You are right. I pay attention. I thought it was the other group. But, um, yeah, the more religious group out there. Um, so, you know, offerings and that kind of stuff. So they collect a lot of money from there. Um, a lot of taxation and stuff like that. Um, trade goods from Auntless have been hit. That kind of thing. So they kind of get down in that cluster zone down there. Uh, speculation of their hideouts <clears throat> is within that region as well. Um, you probably would have heard that um, several small military detachments from Trance has headed into the Innerwood Swamp to try to flush them out with no luck. Um, as well as checking the surrounding areas of the roads, no caves, no forts, no nothing like that, no like bandit hideout kind of things have been spotted. Uh, 
these typically happen during uh, dusk to, you know, the evening, uh, when these supply lines are hit, when people are camping. And they're typically on foot when it happens. They don't have a caravan or something like that, like a horse and carriages that they use. So typically they come from the woods, take what they need, and leave. So that is are there, the are there normal targets foot traffic, or is it normally hitting actual wagons and caravans? Um, yes, it is. They've been known to hit caravans and wagons, but foot traffic has also been hit. Um, and it's the foot traffic that has been hit. It's never been like a wealthy merchant or something like that. It's been more of the nobility on horseback traveling from location to location. Um, just highway robbery on that. Um, caravans that are hit are usually packed full of supplies in some form or another. Being from standard, like, daily living foods and goods to anywhere from some military supplies. All right, so uh, I'm going to talk to the group. You, uh, you all think we should possibly pursue this uh, this captured man on on your behalf um, after the uh, the giants. I mean, I'm down to do whatever you guys want. I think it'd have to be up to Dax and Sigma, being it is their mutual acquaintance. I'll be going after him. You guys can come or not. Uh, I think Jail will humble him a bit, so uh, at least we know he's safe for a month. Mm, he would probably have the tendency to be stabbed in prison. Uh, Striker, you also have a close bond to Glofness, the fort out there. Um, a lot of your military service has been out there in the front lines defending the, uh, kingdom. Hmm. Um, you know that would be, from a military point of view, a big loss if they were able to, for whatever reason, take that region. You'd be losing a good chunk of land and people would be suffering. That would be in the back of your mind. You don't have to bring it up to the party, but that would something that would be there. Hmm. Are we splitting or are we staying as a full group? I recommend sticking together. I mean, do we really yeah. need to fight the hill giants? I think it would I mean, be of importance. Yes. We could get some money. I think. We, we need yes, some. we need We're the all meat. Broke. As little as I care for most material things, more coin is better than less. Alright, so kill the hill giants as fast as humanly possible, or negotiate with them. Uh, and then prioritize from there once we figure that out. Sounds good. Works for me. Let's uh, get this disguise from the tailor and head out. Yeah. All right. Picking up your disguise. Is there anything else anybody wants to load up on before leaving? Is the disguise going to be redundant if I put my better cape on top of it? Kind of, yeah. Oh, I love my cape. Is this new cape for a line? No, it is not. It is a canvas-type material, uh, kind of shellacked with a oil, oil material to help repel water. All right, I'll fold up my good cape. Say, uh, hip bleed, uh, you mind holding on to this? Go right ahead. Nice. All right. Nice person. Uh, Dax will be right with you in one second. Um... Which route would you like to take down there? There's a couple different ways you could go. The shortest route would be through Amistad, right? Um, yeah. It would be the fastest. But you would also be hitting the, um, 
main location of the citrus or not citrus citron um, um royal faction is garrett gonna be in trouble for not having a bracelet or is he important enough to not need one um he disclosed information that he did have documentation allowing him not to have it all right so we're not gonna get screwed on that all right Shall we proceed then? Doesn't seem like we have a lot of time to waste. Mm. Uh, yeah. Sounds good. So, is there anything anybody wants to cover? Pick up for supplies? I'm gonna feed Dalton. Yep, that's already been established. Um, I'll let you know if it ever comes, if I think that it's an issue. If you're abusing him. Is there anybody... Well, so we'll wrap it up here if you guys setting out from the Silver City to Anistead, or did you guys want to take the roundabout way to Trance? I think the goal was to go quickly. Can so, like probably the shorter yeah, one. As fast as possible. Yeah, the, the quickest way. Uh, so, my next Ooh. question would be, are you heading directly to Innerwood or Innerwood Swamp? Innerwood, where they set up the bounty, because they said the town was being terrorized there. No. So, we're most likely to run into them at some point. And the swamp's right fucking there if they're not there, so...